State Militia, actual play. The team gets a little work done by their new doctor friend and discusses a surefire way to make some easy cred before heading south into Spider's territory. It's time to begin episode 12. I would know. I, I would feel it in my machine pistol. First things first, what did everybody do prior to all of this? Let's just say you guys have a week of downtime. Okay. Like, what would your characters be doing? Like, what's their goals in, in that week of downtime? Like, generally, what's the what, what are they trying to do? Well, I obviously don't have any more raw explosives left. So I think what she probably would have done is uh, taken the skills and knowledge she has, and since she mentioned this to the other people previously, it's going to look for, it's going to start, I mean, because we don't have the explosives yet, but we certainly can start setting up rat lines of cables everywhere so we can surround this place with claymore mines one day, you know? <laughs> you know, we, we, we uh, might not have the actual claymores yet, but we can set the lines up. Hardware everywhere. Okay. Yeah, go for it. All right. Oh, no. Oh, whoa, whoa. That's a whole lot of sixes. Holy jeebus. Wow. Whoa. Hey, uh, guys, look, um, I'm putting up all these wires. Um, I'll be doing it for the next few days. Um, I just, I just like, remember what I said before about, about like not touching them? Um, don't touch these ones either, okay? Uh, they're not going to blow anything up. Well, I mean, well, I mean, I'm, I mean, not yet. But like, if you get used to touching them, then one day they might blow stuff up and you might touch them and then they might blow stuff up. So you might not want to do that, okay? Just watch out. Trust me, trust me, it'll be good, though, if, 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 like, ghouls try to kill us. They'll kill everything, I guarantee it. Hey, everybody, Sarlacc here. Sorry to interrupt today's episode, but we got into a rather technical discussion about how the lines were going to snake around the treehouse, and upon review, it was, it was pretty dry listening. Uh, so we've removed that portion just so to spare you 15 or 20 minutes of, of us discussing which direction certain wires were going to run. But we come back to improv describing some of the new cyberware she just had installed. In this case, a radar sensor. I can see through walls and shit. Your walls, too. Don't worry, I won't look, though. Wait, so you're like, you're, uh... And he'll just suddenly, Kenna will put his hands, like, over his genitals. Like, what are you, what you looking at, huh? Well, I mean, as long as you don't put a gun there, it's okay. I can see all your guns, though. Oh, That's I always cool. keep it there. Oh, well, I still won't look, don't worry. I respect people, unless I'm blowing them up. Also, I need explosives. Can you help me with that? I noticed you <laughs> laid a lot of explosives around here. Or wires. No, no, no. No, no, no. There's, there's, there's no explosives yet. I'm just getting the wires ready. I need you to help me with this, with, with that second part though. Um, but, but, but then like you see this thing and show you like a circuit board with like a shit ton of like little like, like toggle switches on it. So say once, once, once I'm done, if I toggle all these, literally everything around this place will blow up. I mean everything. Kenna will put his hands over his genitals again. What? No, uh, no. I mean not that. I mean, I mean, I mean like everything that's like outside, outside a line. I'm gonna draw on the ground. Well, I mean not me. You're gonna draw it. Because I'm gonna have to direct it, but I mean, but I mean, you know. Remind me not to touch anything that that you've ever touched. Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't do that. Can we can we just make a house rule that uh, like like you're know, like can we just make it to where like the couches don't get bombs in them? Because I this this thing is comfy and I'm really tall and I can actually stretch my legs out on this one. Well, I mean, I mean, I won't put a bomb in it, but 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 can I like store explosives under it just so they're out of the way? Well, yeah, if you don't have that big red box with the handle you push down on the top, you're always not going to blow up. So it's fine. I don't mind. You stuff the pillows with them things. Whatever. Okay, there's lots of other types of detonators, but okay. Yeah, you know all about them detonators, don't you? You're making people dead left and right. I mean, I mean, yes. <laughs> so, so Juliet. Mm -hmm. um, so for her week, what, what is she doing spending her time? She is going to be working on finding a new hideout. She has both eyes out for personal hidey holes and for one that would suit the entire team because she does not want them staying in their current location. Not one bit. Not that she'll mention that little fact to the others, of course. Wow. <laughs> okay, so how does she go about doing this? This is going to be first getting a feel for where the sweeps have already gone through as far as KE in the Barrens, and then settling into what seems to be the most quiet neighborhood after the sweeps have gone through, perhaps a spot where one of the gangs has just pulled out because there's not enough people, not enough business, it's isolated, who knows why. And she'll start scouting around for, say, an old cellar, perhaps a building that is particularly innocuous or is structurally sound compared to the others around it. 
Does she have like sprawl life or something like that? Would survival do? Roll me your area knowledge, okay. and uh, whatever you get on that, you can add as a bonus to survival. Okay. Can I edge that? Of course. Juliet, you're able to find something that definitely would work for yourself. It's not going to be much of anything. It's just going to be a low apartment in an obscure area. The area that you find looks to have been some sort of like a basement or a, um, a cellar of some sort of business, whether if that was a bar or post office or what. There's just whatever this used to be. It's It's been a dugout area that you have to squirm your way into, but it definitely would be a suitably hidden place to stay. There's two there's two or three ways in that, that you that you're able to find. May I add this as a uh living lifestyle on her sheet? Yes. And this would be a squat, not a low. Fair enough. Um then Horatio. Uh well the first thing he does is he talks to Dr. Q and he's like, yo, man, uh what I really need is a Gatling gun to like uh, uh, like uh, pops out of my shoulder so that I can lay the hurt on some fools, and and then Doctor Q is like, no, if I if I install that, you'll die. Uh, after after arguing it about it for about half an hour, uh, Horatio's convinced and settles on some uh, some upgrades to his regular wear that he's already got, and then he goes out and tries to find some Oracle uh, plated machine pistols, and everybody he talks to just laughs, and so he figures, well, I'm not going to be able to find those for a while. I'm going to need to talk to a specialist. How does Horatio know what Oracolcum looks like? Oh, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah, he knows about it from the trids. And he knows it's the most valuable metal that, that pretty much exists. Therefore, it's it's the most gangster and flashiest thing you can put on your machine pistols or assault rifle. And if you're if you're going to be a boss, you need that, you know, engraved on your, your machine pistol. That's how people tell. And so in, in preparation of that day, he, he spends the week working on his dual wielding and shooting from, from two hands uh, in order to pick up the machine pistol spec. And uh, maybe he'll try and get a SMG of some kind, like, like an Ingram. That's what real shadow runners use. And he's seen a lot of trids about them. Okay. But outside of training and asking around, is there anything in particular that you actually want to get accomplished? Well, if he sees plushy. Uh, who who he has a vendetta with, he would uh, attempt to murder that person. Who is Plushy? Well, Plushy is a is a member of the gang of of the Crimson Crush, and he's the reason why he is not a full fledged member and and is just kind of an associate, right? So, what do you do to piss him off, or you to piss him off? Uh, well, I won his car in a race back when back when he was doing street races, because you know a lot of times you put your car up uh, as collateral for the race, and I won. And then his girl left him because I, I won the car. It, uh, she really was just in the relationship for the car. And then, you know, that, that kind of grew the animosity. And so eventually Horatio discovered that, that Plushy was skimming off the top. And so he, uh, he uh, told the, the other members of the crush about this. And this caused Plushy to, to kind of fall from grace and get kicked out. So he took over the Purple Pop, which is like a, a splinter gang as a means of kind of escaping the, the Crimson Crush justice, right? But along the way, he also told a bunch of lies to all his associates about um, Horatio, which which are, of course, lies and, and not true at all, which kind of made it a little bit harder for him to advance. Okay. Uh, would you make me an edge check, please? With pleasure. It's going to be very difficult. Ha! <laughs> See, yeah, no sign of plushy. Apparently his gang's been driven out of wherever they were to begin with. He may be dead. You don't know. I would know, but I would feel it in my machine pistol. What about you, Kennel? So Kennel's trying, he's trying to be productive. You know, we, we got that new dock contact and he was looking about trying to figure out what to get installed and he just, he didn't know. So he decided he, he just needed to get out because that, that whole thing with going underground and dealing with ghouls kind of honestly has him on edge just a little bit. So he decided to go out to the university in downtown because he actually does have a real sin, unfortunately. So he got through the checkpoints okay. And he's a smart man, so he brought one of the more adorable dogs that he has. He brought John with him, which is the uh, the pug husky nightmare mix. So he brought his dumb little dog with him, and he went out to the university, and he was just standing around and just just trying to, to, to see how the other half lived. 
when he noticed there was, it, it was weird because it was, a, it was definitely a, a college student who he was on the phone and you could hear him talking to his professor and he was saying, but you don't understand professor. I had to go home for the funeral. And then for whatever the professor was saying on the other end of the phone, clearly was not going well for the student. So this young man then says, hang on, just, okay, just talk to my dad. And he, he actually took his comm link and he kind of rubbed it against his shirt a little bit. And he went, dad, my professor's not listening. But he didn't hand the comm link to anyone. He just put it back up to his ear and up to his mouth. And his voice was like a different person. And he was like, excuse me, sir, but my son. And he completely steamrolled this professor by pretending to be his dad. And that actually made Kennel reach up his big hand and snap his fingers one time like that. And he said, that's what I have to learn how to do. So he started thinking, how could I impersonate people a little bit better? And then he remembered the catalog of cyberware that he had found on the Matrix. Because, yo, he is good at searching for things on the Matrix. And he found out there was such a thing called a voice modulator. And he just, he had to have it because it makes your voice sound like other stuff. And this also means that when he's training the dogs, he doesn't have to get out the dog whistle. He can just use the modulator to make that sound come out of his throat. So to him, this is the coolest thing ever. So he's been practicing that up. He's been learning how to talk like other people. And the other thing that he did is like he was looking at the way that that kid was pretending he was his dad and the way that he was speaking down to the professor and he even had the body language in it. So Kennel thought, you know, hey, that's how you intimidate people. I'm going to start doing that too. And he hasn't really been throwing his weight around too much, but he's definitely been a little bit louder at the stuffer shack than he used to, just figuring out how to make people do what he wanted. So he went back to the, the street dock and he said, I need, the, I need the voice modulator. He got that installed. And while he was there, the street dock had a special on an increased hearing spectrum. And he thought, hey, this way I'll be able to hear the things that I'm saying with my voice modulator when I'm talking to the dogs. Because he doesn't understand that dogs don't really understand words that well because he's from the Barrens. So he had that installed too, and now all that's really happened is whenever he uses the dog whistle setting on his voice modulator, it really hurts his ears because he doesn't know how to shut it off yet. So he's done that, and he's uh, he's trying to, he was looking at the things that was happening at the university. He saw they had a couple of like acting classes and public speech classes, and he's thinking maybe, you know, maybe for the future, that'd be a good way to go so he can learn how to talk to people a little bit better. Could you make me a negotiation check, please? To include first impression or just my, my base stats? Include first impression. Three hits, sir. Okay. As you're walking around, which college are you going to? The actual Seattle University, the one in downtown. Okay. As you're looking for acting classes, you can't help but notice that there is a, a class free for students. Each yeah. student, doesn't matter what their major is or whatever, that is just a class to teach you how to improv. On it is a singular comp code. I will definitely write that number down. I'll take out my comm link and he'll beep, boop, boop, beep, program that number in. Is there a name attached to that number or is it just want to learn yes. how to? No, there is. You have Suzanne Wilcox. Well, there's no time like the present to hit that send button. Let's, let's give uh, Miss Wilcox a phone call. Um, yes, hello, this is Suzanne. Yo, uh, good, good morning, yo, mom. I, w I was just over at the university, and I saw that you had a flyer up for uh, you need you need some uh, some people to train as actors or uh, some some improv improvisation. Improvisation. Now, th this is just a exercise in just getting better and just having fun. Why are you interested? Well, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, pr I'm already pretty good at having fun, but you can always have, you know more fun like you know when you're at a party and people are just drinking and then somebody bust out a bag i mean like uh i mean like i've i've always thought about being an, an actor and you have to know how to do this stuff to be an actor yeah oh don't worry i'm quite familiar with party favors yeah so uh, so uh, so is this like a like a classroom thing like you got it like like here at the at the university, or is this like do we go to like a the the big theater that's out at the the art museum? Like like what's up? Oh no, th this would actually be at, at uh, the school's theatrical stage. It it is um sorry if you're not an art major, it, it would be here, and um, she'll send you like a basically like a AR flyer over to you that just details like where everything is at, what time to show up, and all of that sort of stuff. Cool. Yeah, I can, I can, I can do this. You know, they don't, they don't close the, uh, the border crossing, you know, until a lot time after, until like much later after this. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. I can do this. I'll show up. Like, yo, you got like a lot of hotties in this class, or is it just like dudes that show up? Uh, this will be our first meeting. All right, sounds still cool. Like, 
do I got to bring like a kegger or anything like that? Or is this like, like, is it like BYOB kind of thing? Well, if you, if you brought the keg, I'm sure you'd be most popular, but no, that is not necessary. We are just exercising our minds and exploring the art of acting. Wait, yo, don't take this the wrong way, but, uh, this ain't some kind of weird cult, is it? It's good if you want it to be. And you get the impression of like, (laughs) she's winking at you over the phone. Since he's still a little bit, uh, unnerved by everything happening with the ghouls, and it doesn't help that he's been watching a bunch of sci-fi and fantasy movies about ghouls trying to figure them out. Because why why look at actual research when you could just watch a tritio about it? They have to be accurate, right? So yeah, um I but if I see any like one of them sacrificing altars where people like like drink their blood and like pull out their heart and start talking about Kaliman stuff, yo, I am probably gonna leave, okay? Well this is an um, improvisational class. I'm fairly certain no ritualistic sacrifice will happen. Yeah, or any of that happens. Cool. I yo, yo, I'll see you. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm bringing a whole keg, you know, I might get thirsty on the ride over, you know? Uh, yeah, as soon as, soon as you say, I'm, I'm going to go, she, uh, she just, it's disconnected. Well, he, cause he has to save face. He will look around and make a big show of hitting the button and saying, end call. That's yeah, that's right. And he'll look around kind of nervously cause you know, nobody hangs up on him. I'm going to go ahead and give you a three, one contact. Oh yeah. I know what your play by post is going to be this week. <laughs> <laughs> So, if I remember correctly, Improv also had that location of the really nice comic from the spiders. Yeah, I was Ooh, that's right. That, that yeah. was down in uh, Brain Heaven, I think. Yeah. Yes, Ooh, it they was. have it coming. Ooh, that'd be good. And 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 we even have that big bomb you can toss the door to open the to you know to you know get the front door open. Oh, well, how do you guys feel about uh, scouting this place out? Yeah, 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 that sounds good. They had a nice com link, and when they have nice com links, it means they have lots of nice other stuff. Well, like if we could get like um, some of those vials or whatever that you said were important, and and for like making making drugs, we could like be in business. Yeah, that idea. Uh, luckily, we have lots of vehicles and guns and explosives, so we can scout this place out real nice. Because uh, improv is super down for that. And I mean, you know, the nice thing is we have so many vehicles that, I mean, if you want, we just like strap my big bomb to a bike and just send the bike right at the front door. It'd be great. Oh, no. You want to, you want to like use the mono wheel? Uh, oh, sure. Like it's like round and bombs are round, which means it's going to explode more. Oh, and, 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 and what I can do is like, is, is like before I send it in, right, right. I'll break up the fuselage. I'll, you know, like I'll, I'll break up the outside of it. Like, you know, I'll kind of like, you know, cut like, so when it explodes, the whole thing just turns into shrapnel. Oh man, we got, we got to uh, blow that thing up. I was, I was learning how to ride that. Look, look, I mean, I mean, I mean, you can just hit someone and take their scoot if you want, you know, I mean, we can do that too. No, no, no. That's that's always like mages or rich. Oh shit! You're right. You know, I knew some people who like who who like saw this woman on a scoot, right? And they tried to grab her, right? And then and and then they just got like turned into lightning balls. It was it was it was crazy. You don't want you don't want to mess with that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So what if what if? Okay, how about instead of trying to grab one of these mages, how about we just like like I'll just punch one in the neck like hard enough no. to like to like kill him, and then we could steal like all their magic wands, and then we could do some magic too. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with magic people. That's 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 crazy stuff. You don't oh, want to mess with that. No, that's that's like on on the Carl the Combat Mage episode seventy two, when he lost his wand. Well, look, no, look, I'm look, thinking. Look. I'm thinking about when he was fighting that skeleton that dude, who? and he took the ring off of his finger, and all of a sudden he could cast that weird like black smoke thing that came out. Like, why don't we just get some of those? Look, no, look, no, no, we, gotta, we don't. We got to get the one that lets you control all the undead, so that we can like send the horde of ghouls at our enemies. Look, 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 look. Let's just use the mono wheel, okay? I'll find I'll find a whole bunch of like nuts and bolts and just pack the cargo con- uh, co- uh, compartment full of that. Hey, well, well, like maybe we want to scout first. Yeah. Oh wait. Oh right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's wait. Oh, a good idea. I got it. I got it. Okay. So we'll find one of those scoots. We'll knock out the mage riding it. We'll take the mage. We'll duct tape that mage person into the mono wheel. We'll put like a bomb vest on them, and then we'll drive that into the building. So that when the mage wakes up and see all these people standing around, the mage will start throwing like lightning bolts and like making giant like horses kick people and stuff. And then you know when we're like cool, time for us to go in. You hit the the kaboom switch and you blow that mage up, so we don't have to worry about being turned into balls of lightning. Oh, that's whiz. Not bad. All right, all right, guys. We should we should probably go check this place out. I'm just saying. Okay, but, but where are we gonna find a whiz? Wait, we don't we don't need that part. Trust me, the bomb will do it. You can trust me on that. 
I don't I don't want to mess with mages. I'm just saying, man. They do they 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 like get in your head. They get in your head and then they make you do things. I don't want that. Well, that that's like why uh, Kennel's gonna punch him. Well, yeah, but but like but like, what if they look at him and then instead of punching instead of punching them, he punches you in the face? Oh, oh well, man. that would go really 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 wrong for him. Yeah, man, I, I'd feel real bad if I broke your head. It's cool. Tell you what, let's let's do what Improv says because Improv, yo, she's pretty smart. I'm just saying, and we'll uh, we'll how about we go look at this place and then we'll see if yo maybe we even need like a mage to blow this place up because what if what if it's only like two guys and we could just kill them ourselves? That would be nice. Yes, that's what. Let's check first. I mean, I, I'd rather not kill them if we don't gotta. I mean, we could just like you know break the legs off or something. But I mean, if if we gotta do, we gotta do because yo, these are the people that were shooting at us, you know. Okay. So you're gonna go scout out the area. Yeah. Mr. GM, I threw out an area knowledge Seattle with a speck in Redmond. Uh, the area around the, where, when we have the comlinks location, uh, what is that general area like? I got two hits on that check. It's pretty solidly in Spider's territory. And as far as Redmond goes, it's a pretty nice area. Like outside of Touristville, it's decent, despite being somewhat close to Glow City. But that's because it's very close to... Uh, it's very close to uh, a couple of different manufacturing plants down there. So people actually get some work fairly often. And yes, the spiders are involved in the street racing. Uh, improv, what's the test for? It was, it was, that was another area of knowledge. I thought I might be, I might get super lucky, but I didn't rip. Man, I've, I've tangled with these, these guys a lot. <laughs> uh, yes. While they're not exactly a go gang, they're known for being fairly high tech. It's fairly known that they have some sort of deal going on with uh, Monohan vehicles, as well as a few of the other manufacturers in Southern Redmond that have braved the area. But that's if everything is is as it was prior to uh, the massive hit that was going on. Well, if you guys want to want to pile in a gopher, we'll uh, go driving. Well, Let's now, now one thing I was thinking though is. It, it was spiders what came over to that uh, that apartment building that we did that hit to get all that equipment for uh, for red top for uh, red hot. Um, what what if like they saw what that truck looks like and then we go rolling up in the same truck, yo? Oh, oh, oh! Maybe we yeah. should like uh, paint it. Wait, I got an idea. We got that other gopher that we done stole that day. I mean, you think it, it, it was making some weird noise when we were driving it last time? You think it'll make it down there? Um, I mean, I mean, I can take a look. Can you roll me an automotive mechanic? Let's do it. Hey. Uh, with how this thing is currently, you're most likely going to have to Flintstone it. Oh, no. Oh, no, guys. This one's not going to work. We're going to have to use the other one. It's repairable, but it's not going to go anywhere very quickly. Wait, we want do you... to be a vehicle capable of escaping if we have to. Now, I mean, I, I feel bad. I never asked this before, but don't any of y'all have your own, like, like, motorcycles or or anything like yeah. that yeah but why do you think we'd use them well i mean i'm just saying i got my i got a sidecar i could take one person with me in the sidecar i mean it it, it smells a little bit like hoder because that's where he likes to sit and i don't mean like when we're driving it's just yeah. that's where he likes to sleep most nights which don't make no sense because he got this cute little bed that i bought for him it's got these little white doggy bones on it that are all stitched in don't don't worry i'll show i'll show you all pictures later I got on my P2.1. Hey, yo, don't forget, follow me, P2.1, all right? I almost got my, my, my P scores almost in double digits. What? Uh, I thought you wanted, like, like negatives on that. No, that's that's only if you, you're one of those guys who plays golf, the, the golf game on P2.1, because the lower your number, the better in that. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Well, I think I think we should, like, spray paint old, old Bessie here. I've, I've got this nice new shade of blue. I've been I've been using it as a background for the uh, the crimson red. It really makes the red pop. Yeah. But if if we paint it blue, it will it'll look different, right? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got it. Okay. So we'll paint it blue. Okay. Okay. And then on the side to throw them off the trail, like we gotta like we don't want them to think we're a gang. So we'll just like call ourselves like no man. We we're just those car aficionados. You feel me? We'll call ourselves like the cruising crew, and we could just put like a CC over it, like but it's gotta be like in a power color that's gonna stand out, you know. So this way they'll see us and they'll be like, oh, it's the cruising crew. It ain't no other gang or nothing like that. Hmm. Green? Uh, yeah, sure, I can do that. I can do what well, I can. Oh, oh, wait, you already did it. Okay. Uh, Harisha, where are, you, where are you getting this spray paint from? Probably from a stuffer shack. He, okay. he knows all the, all the greatest deals that stuffer shack has. So many deals. 
Did you know that they have a they have a sale every single Thursday because they get their new stock on Friday and they and they need to clear space to make to make a space for the new stuff. So they always have a Thursday sale. You you can get uh, an extra fifteen percent off if you're paying in Corp Script. Not that I have any stuff for Shack Corp Script. In BS technology. Yeah. Um, if you're spring down the <laughs> uh, if you're spring down the uh, the gopher. You've already rolled the artisan check. Are you happy with that amount of successes? Man, that makes me nervous when you ask it, but yes. <laughs> okay. Would you also mind rolling a disguise check using the, your successes as a bonus? Sure. Yeah, it's not great. There's still some red patches here, here and there. It's hard to necessarily get it all to, to look quite right, but it's spray paint You're in the Barrens. It's called Barrens Camo. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, like, um, out in my area anywhere, there are people who buy their pickups, and then they spray paint camo on them themselves. Oh, yes. Yep. And it always looks terrible. Always. Uh, I just sort of imagine that, but with, like, red and blue. God, that would be so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> You're able to get it to look different. <laughs> the, not, not necessarily good, but different. It's also been a couple of weeks, so, you know. It's kind of hard to tell one gopher apart from another. It's good enough. It'll do. We did it, boys. <laughs> uh, so, exactly what do you guys do? Well, I can mean, you, like, uh, trace that thing again? Um, um, I can take a look, sure. Hold on. Let me, let me see if I see it again. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the perceptions to see if I see it again. Uh, that you do. Okay. I'm going to try uh, sleaze hacking on this one. What's its firewall? It's a five. Oh, oh boy, it's slave to something, boys. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna try our best to to get a mark on this to get, you know, what? no, no, we're no, no, we're gonna do it proper. We're gonna get two marks on this thing. Yeah, praise for two. Uh, let's try to trace it. So uh, improv is gonna go unconscious for a few minutes because this takes a while. Because this takes a while. It's a little further south than where it was originally, but it's still there. All right, guys, here it is. I found it. It's not in the exact same spot, but it's close enough. So uh, what approximately what time of day is it right now, Mr. GM? Oh, what time of day do you guys want it to be? That's the beautiful thing about doing your own <laughs> driven mission. It can be well, whenever. Well, Kennel is, oddly enough, he's an early riser. You wouldn't think it for be, him being a Baron's troll. But, you know, Doggy's got to go potty and he's got to walk him. He's up at sunshine. So it, it's kind of a more an issue on everybody else for when they get up and when they want to get together. I get up around uh, 11, 1100 at the earliest. It's a lot of late nights. We're probably up all night tinkering all the time, so any time's good. Yeah. Okay, so we're thinking probably, say, around noon for everybody to get together, have a talk about where we're going. We can head out at noon and be there no later than one, you think? Sure. Sounds about right to me. Let's go see what's up. All right, so are we okay. all gonna we all gonna pile into one gopher? Or you, I, I'm I'm thinking like, yo, I mean like if even though like the this gopher like yo, look at this paint job, this thing look good. But what if they see like you know four people getting out of this this pickup truck, even though a pickup truck looked different? What if like like you know we run into somebody that was there when we was you know you know, and he mimics picking up a rifle and shooting everybody. Well then, we'll 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 I'll make sure to have um some bombs with me with, and then you just throw the bombs at them, and then we kill them and take their stuff. Like um, you could you could know the smuggling compartment is isn't big enough, but but like I mean I can get in there if you want. I I don't think they like saw you. Because, oh, because you know well, and you too, you you too, uh, Kennel, you hit too. Hey yo so yo, I wasn't hiding. I I threw a hand grenade and it made a car run over some people. All right, I wasn't hiding nowhere. Yeah, but it was only like like Juliet and myself that were out there visible, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, because she's tough. Not not like you. No no offense, but if like we're in the cab, right, and and you are in the back, maybe maybe playing some tunes, it should be good. Whatever. I I ain't scared. Let's do this. Maybe. I'll stand up. I'll even sing them a song if you want me to. What? Uh, maybe maybe we could like have some scrap. Right? Maybe these guys want some scrap. What do you guys think? Well, but I mean, but we're just killing them, though, right? No, we gotta like, uh, what what's it called? Like, get the get the lay of the land. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Did I didn't even show you guys what I bought, yo? Uh, he'll go over to a little duffel mm -hmm. bag and he'll take out a one of those S. Oh, what is it? The SK Sikorsky micro skimmer. 
uh, a little oh nice little little tiny drone Ooh. and he'll take it out and he'll take out his comm link and he'll turn it sideways because you always do it in landscape and he'll start flying it around the room like look i mean i don't know how to use this really really well but yo this thing is so cool oh man that's whiz what what's it do yo it it it, it i mean it only stays like three inches off the ground but it flies around and it's got camera on it what is is it for like target practice? No, I use it when like when uh when the, when the dogs like when I gotta run like a like one of the the really fast dogs and I won't get bit no more. What I'll do is I fly this thing out and they'll chase this thing and I just like go under a fence with it so they can't like you know eat it because this thing cost me like a whole lot of new yen. But I'm thinking you know if we need to we could just like I I don't know like fly this around or something and use the camera to take pictures of things. Oh yeah, that could work. I can keep it hidden too. Don't worry. No, uh, Wait, I mean, are we are we just gonna like walk around, or are we like breaking into the ha- like like wherever this guy is, like right now? I mean, no, we gotta we gotta let's go have a look down. Yeah, yeah, let's just go have a look, and then and then once you know where they are, you know, once we know where they are, you can toss a bomb at the door, and then we can kill everybody. All right, <laughs> oh, you know, straightforward plan. Dot JPEG. Kendall doesn't really need a whole bunch of uh, provoking. He'll get up and start going out the door, and he'll stop when he gets to the door. He's like, wait a minute, wait these 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 spiders, they're gangers, yeah. So. I mean, should we should we bring them like a bunch of like say we're like we're dealing drugs and someone see if they want to buy some because I got like a whole bunch of X. Oh, that's that's I like, like this idea. Yeah, that's some some like MIB stuff. No, no, I don't got no MIB. I got X. I said no, like like when the when the CIA was was trying to get keep the orcs down, right? They got them all hooked on beta meth. Yeah, they had they had like a name for it and everything. Yeah, uh, beta meth. No, it was like Operation Keep the Orcs Down or something. Oh, I thought you was talking about the drugs they had a name for. Yeah, because I was like, they call it beta meth. I mean, what do you, why do you think you call it beta meth? That's the name for it. But yeah, yeah, it's something about like the, the hold the orcs down or the su- suppression of the, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't follow that. I don't follow politics that much. Oh, uh, like, never mind. So yeah, you guys have a decent way in, or at least a decent way to scout, so... Also, uh, did I manage to uh, get that thing to go, uh, going off? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're fine. Okay, what am I hearing? That was the microphone and camera. Camera, probably not much, but... Yeah, camera, you're mostly getting the inside of a pocket, yeah. a backpack or something like that. It's hard to tell. But microphone-wise, you're not quite picking up a whole lot because while it's a decent comm link, it's still inside something. It's being moved around and all, all of that. But it doesn't seem to be... Do you have sprawl off? Let's just yep. put it this way. Yeah, could you roll me sprawl off then? Uh, sure. Let's 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 do it. Let's see what we got here. Good enough. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be like with whatever this guy's doing. He's just not or whoever has this or wherever it's at. It doesn't appear to be the normal ganger stuff that that you associate with. Like there's that doesn't appear to be like a whole lot of partying going on. There doesn't appear to be any sort of rowdiness or just general hooliganism. Okay. All right. Well, that, that, seems, that actually seems to be fairly quiet. All right. Well, I will uh, just keep an eye on it as uh, you know, as we move forward, uh, and I'll drop it before I would get converged. Okay. All right. So Kenna would run back to his place out in Sophocles, and he will pick up 15 tablets of X and five joints of deep weed. Because he remembered X isn't all that expensive, but deep weed's like 400 bucks a pop. If they're not biting on the X, maybe they'll bite on the deep weed. Well, I'll drive us over. Would you like a vehicle etiquette or a subtle pilot or anything like that? If you use etiquette, subtle pilot would apply here. Yeah, do etiquette. Because unless you're, unless you're just trying to avoid being seen, but that's kind of hard on open road. I know the streets. It's because I came from them. Why do I think, like, every time like you... But like you speak after you roll something, like what I feel like that's what's being Horatio's saying in his head. I, I actually it imagine him is. saying that out loud, <laughs> just driving down the road all smooth as hell, and just saying because I came from the streets. Like it's like it's a really bad noir film. I can't get away from the noir. Yeah, if you don't have a monologue going, who are you in this world? Come on. You're able to drive through. There doesn't seem to be anybody following you or anything major that calls out to you that causes any sort of worry. Well, like, like I got to keep my eyes on the road. So if you guys see anything that that's not bolted down that we could steal, you'd let me I know. Like you think. Kenna will fire up the sim rig and keep his head on a swivel. I mean, still playing it cool, but just trying to get a recording of the area and what he sees and the kind of cars that are around here as well. Everybody who's available, please roll perception checks. Yes, sir. 
Womp womp. Would improv be running or have something on just like uh, open to the matrix or would ever be th- would everything be running silent? Uh, I don't feel like people out here would run stuff silent most times. That'd be a giveaway that you're a corp, that you're that you're like a corp hit squad, you know. So so probably not too too much. What was going on? As you begin pulling into this area, whoever doesn't have their stuff running silent or doesn't have a a massive ad filter pulling up, you receive a notification that this area is slated for evacuation. Is there a date or time stamp on this notification? Yes, within the next three days. Ooh. Oh, wow, guys, this is good. If we kill anyone here, no one will care. Well, I mean, they'll care even less than they usually do. Hey, do you think it's going to be that those army guys that we dealt with? Yeah, maybe. I, I think we shouldn't be here guys. when they come back. Yes, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea. I think I might do a bit more now. Uh, do oh, any we of can you, take them. Do any of you have any sports-based knowledge skills? Uh-huh. Do VR sports count? No. Uh-huh. A street racing. You know, I, I said it last session, too. It's always the character I'm not playing because I, I actually have sports trivia on Picket Fence. I do not have any of that on Kennel. Would you allow Sprawl Life at a penalty? Yes, Sprawl Life at a minus two. Something about this seems familiar, but it, it's hard to put your finger on. Being this close to, to a border, this, it could just about be anything, really. But this sort of stuff just pops up every now and then. No idea at all. Oh, the last time I saw this, it was because some uh, uh, gray mold, black mold. I think it was black mold. It was like some kind of awakened uh, fungus. Yeah, they had to close the whole block down, and then they torched it, and then everybody who inhaled the fumes died. <laughs> That's probably what happens. It's scheduled to be evacuated within three days, so do with that with how you will. Now, now, is there anything saying that it's going to be demolished or just evacuated? Uh, the notification that that you all receive is warning you're enter you're entering an area that is designated to be evacuated within three days. So we have three days, it, it's fine. All persons within this area after three days cannot pursue legal action of any means should bodily harm come to them. Well, okay, so I mean that ain't bad because what if what if we roll up on like on day three, but we wear like construction worker uniforms. There's no way they're going to know that we're here to hit them and, and steal their shit, you know? Well, no, yeah. Well, so, 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 I mean, if the, you know, if those army guys come back in three days, I really don't want to be here. I think, I think we should just, you know, find whoever has a comm link and like, and, 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 and like the stuff that they've probably got and then, you know, shoot them and then, you know, get out of here. No, we could take them. Uh, I, n- I mean, I, I mean, I'll be honest. The only reason we're not all dead is because I, it's because I blew up that building and like everybody inside it. No, I could have taken them all. Um, okay. Hey, I don't know if you could see be, because, you know, you wasn't there with us, but, but when Horatio was shooting, he only needed one hand to fire that AK. I mean, I could see I was tied into all the cameras there. Oh, somebody tied you up? That's messed up, girl. Well, no. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, y- yeah, well, I mean, it was kind of like that, and then they tried to get me in my room, um, and then, and then I blew up, like, six of them. But, like, yeah, we really don't want to, we really don't want to fight those guys if we don't have to. They, you know, they had good guns, except the one guy who seemed to be coming in to clean up, and then I shot him. But, you know, don't worry about that. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, like, maybe drive around the block another time and well, see I, if we can, like, home in on, on where these guys are. Well, well, right. I mean, I, well, I mean, I have a trace up. I know exactly where it is. Yeah, this was just, like, as you guys are pulling into the area. Yeah. As you guys begin getting closer, you come up on, considering this is Barron's, it, it's still a nice, a nicer building for the Barron's, but it's still fairly run down. It's an oddly shaped building, almost in the shape of a Y, r- roughly that shape. And obviously all over it, there is various spider webs braided in dark brown with red, red spider web pattern. With all of your various perceptions, you do notice that there are a handful of cameras on the outside and improv. I can toss one if you yeah, like, yeah, but I, didn't yeah, know, I just yeah, didn't know if they're close enough. Yeah, if you'd go ahead. And Kendall, what sensors does your uh, drone have? Give me two seconds and I will tell you that answer. Yeah, improv. You're able to get, at least on the side of the building, like as you're going around, you're able to pick up five different cameras that are watching the area, or at least the icons are cameras. Okay. How big is this place? 
as you're driving around, if you have like a rangefinder or something, do some quick math. It's roughly uh, like from top to bottom, roughly a hundred meters across from like tip to tip. And that's like, like, if, like with how we're looking at it, like vertically, it's 100 meters. Width-wise, roughly 50 to 60. Okay. All right. All right. That's big. Uh, how, many, uh, how many floors is it? Uh, it's hard to tell if any have collapsed or not. But it, appear, <laughs> it, it, it appears to have at least at one point been four. Okay. All right. Good to know. Uh, Mr. GM, in answer to your question, the uh, scanners are all rating three. There's a camera with low light, a directional microphone, laser microphone, laser, laser range finder, motion sensor, olfactory scanner, omnidirectional microphone, and a radio signal scanner. Good stuff. Almost like I used to play with a rigger, and I, I know what sensors are the best. <laughs> or, you know, he's a uh, professional dog walker that deals with rich people all the time. So yeah, those are all the things that might help him find out where these people live. In improv, you do notice that there is a host for this site. Ooh, it's rating. That matrix perception, it's a rating for host. Whoa. Oh, jeez. I'm a little scared on my on my, on my my Baron's garbage deck. I'm probably going to stay out of that one. <laughs> God, as I keep getting that disconnect from... Because I've, I've played with all your other deckers before. <laughs> it, I mean, I mean, dude, this deck is a little less competent. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's just, it's so, I'm not used to hearing a, an R4 host. Ooh, that's, that's rough. When it's like, oh, I walked an R8 and didn't even spend edge. Like, that's, that's, oh, well, it's dude, so well, weird. Dude, well, dude, when you're, when, when, when you're hacking with 10 dice on, on, a, on an R1 deck, <laughs> you, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I mean, I go in if we need to. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah, you know, if we need info, I can do it. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I'll let you know what I, I'll let you know that info. Okay. Do we see any people? Yes. There's at least one, again, from driving around, there's at least one person on each of the branches of the building. Are they openly brandishing a firearm? It's hard to tell from this area. I mean, I mean, it's we're in a dilapidated area, area Redmond, yo. Do they look like spider members? Let's see, I don't think any of you had a perception check above a three. Yeah, I had a, no. yeah, three, three, three was the top, I think. It's hard to tell. Like, you can see, like, the, the head and, like, tops of the shoulders of these guys. Well, do we, like, uh, uh, like, maybe want to send, uh, uh, Kennel in there to, like, talk to them and sell them some drugs? Yeah? Uh, I mean, sure, if you want. You might want to take a bomb with you just in case, though. Yeah, then you could blow yourself up, and then we could rush in. Yeah, uh, I could be... Uh, wait, wait, no, yo, if I blow myself up, how am I going to open the door? Well, you do it at the door, and then we can get in and, and loot the place. And, and we'll, like... You know, pour one out for you later. It, it's a long-standing crush tradition. You know, when when initiates don't make it, they gotta sacrifice themselves for the crush. It, it's because they've been crushed. He's just gonna give you this this sort of slightly raised eyebrow look. The uh huh, got it. Well, I mean, if y'all want me to go in, I'll go in. It's like for the greater good. Well, he is going to reach into his pockets and he's going to pull out the uh, the baggie of X and the baggie of deep weed, and he's going to hand them over to Juliet, mm -hmm. and then he will mm -hmm. pop open the little the little compartment in his horn, and he'll take out a little baggie of Nova Coke, and he will pour himself out a line because you know when it's party time, it's party <laughs> time. And we're going to see how many addictions I can stack up on this guy. Uh, he will look around because he has two little baggies, and he'll just sort of gesture to the other three. Like, y you want? I mean, I, I ain't greedy. Uh, no, I'm good. Um, if I have that, uh, you know, when like when like we're preparing, if like, I actually hit these guys, I might, I you know, I might go to seizure and die. So I'm good. I right, then. I mean, uh, whatever. I'll party by myself. Oh, oh, I can't feel my teeth. Oh, I can't feel my teeth. Oh, it sounds like a bad batch. You should let me. You should let me make it next time. I'm pretty good at that. Uh, he's he's gonna look in the this the rearview mirror like he's jamming his big horned head into the truck to look in the mirror and he'll point at himself in the mirror like just give him just doesn't even say a word he just points at himself and then he'll jump off the back of the truck and he will start going toward the building. <laughs> this is a great idea. This is a great plan. This will be fine. Don't worry about it. 